Hello and welcome to today's Retro Tech. I've just got an impromptu episode I wanted to film real quickly here because as you can see I've got this really large consumer Sony CRT that I've taken um, out of my den and I've got it here in the shop. I'm trying to service it a little bit. This is actually the monitor that I RGB modded about three months ago in a video. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the things that are good about this particular television and some of the bad things about it. And now we're going to take a look behind the television. And I want to show you some of the important things about this mod. You're looking at the back of a Sony KV uh, 27 V26 is the exact model on this particular consumer CRT television. Again, I've done a lot of adjustments to this. There's a full video series of me taking it down, fully refurbishing everything inside. I've recapped every single board on this monitor. And I've also um, added RGB to it with a nice switch, as well as this one has SCART for the input, if you remember that. But I just wanted to kind of go over some things here that I really like about this television and also go over some things that are very bad about this television. And let's start off though by I want to remind everybody that uh, this is something I don't recommend unless you're highly trained with CRTs and electrical things. Um, this one is running and I am going to be looking behind it while it's running. I'm not going to be doing anything major. But please know that ahead of time that just uh, I'm going to be taking a lot of precaution not to touch anything. But uh, some of the areas are not harmful to touch. So don't worry about me, but I don't want anybody else to, you know, just think it's okay. It's right out of the bat. I will do a follow-up video with a consumer CRT. Not this one, a smaller one. Uh, going over safety completely on a consumer set. A lot like I did with the PVM. So first, just to refresh everybody, this is the input. You can see this is our SCART. Uh, you can see the resistors on there. I wanted to check and make sure everything's still looking good a couple months later. It's still working perfectly. And I just wanted to make sure the design was fine. Looks good. Nothing's changed. Then that wires into the chip and then over the switch. You just take a quick look here at my switch. I really do like this switch. Let's see, it's very heavy duty. you got to push it hard to switch between RGB. And that just switches between RGB mode and then standard input mode, which every other standard input works great on the TV still. Okay, so first let's go through some of the good things about this television. It has a phenomenal sound system. There's a stereo sound system, but it's actually a little bit better than just stereo. It's some kind of enhanced uh, surround sound stereo that actually makes it, actually fills a room very nicely. And so the sound is just incredible with this. It also has multiple uses where I can even use it with a, an old school antenna and a digital converter box and even use the RF to either play like standard Atari stuff, uh, old, old, old school video game consoles, or even get that raw uh, old school TV footage to come in and play through. I'll also use the composite inputs for things like Roku's and uh, other TV streaming devices as well as VCRs and any other DVDs and lower end analog devices I may want to use. The last thing I want to say about the really good thing is, is the size. It's just phenomenal and it is a whole lot sharper than it was originally. And it just looks phenomenal in RGB, especially in person. But of course, there's not everything is perfect on this television. It does have quite a few drawbacks. Let's get started with the first of those. Let's get into some of the drawbacks of this television. First off, there's a complete lack of adjustability back here. There's really nothing to adjust. I can have no potentiometers to control much at all. There's one back there that is kind of in that vicinity right under my finger. That white, it, it clicks two times left or right. It controls the horizontal side uh, or horizontal centerness of the monitor slash television. But that's the only adjustable thing in this monitor. There is, of course, the flyback that has the normal screen brightness and focus adjustments. So I can clear up a blurry screen, but I have no other things to adjust besides that and overall screen brightness from back here. 
So even though there's a very limited amount of things you can adjust physically in the behind the monitor, there's not even an on-screen menu on this monitor either. Um, it's very limited again. The only thing you can do is use convergence strips to make any kind of adjustments like I had back here with these convergence strips to try to help out some of the um, geometry issues. Because again, there is no uh, geometry adjustments on this monitor at all. I replaced again every capacitor in it and every board and there um, it did not improve much the overall geometry maybe slightly but not enough to really make a large difference continuing on here with some of the problems you can see right along here what I'm talking about since there's no real adjustments for uh, geometry you have to use the convergence strips to make any almost any kind of adjustment and it's a manual adjustment by using magnetism. So it's very tedious, it's very painstaking, and you can never get it quite right. That's really the issue with some of these larger, older CRTs. Now a newer CRT has a lot more features built into it. So that's just the first thing you can really see on this screen, how it suffers from those geometry problems that are really not correctable. So overall on our geometry as far as linearity is concerned, this has great linearity as far as you can see these circles. But the real problem, another big problem with this TV is there's no convergence control for the overall screen. It's actually just got a ground cable in that position that's got a single setting in it and whatever that setting is is what you're stuck with. So the only way to clear up, there's a lot of convergence issues on all the entire screen pretty much. And that color separation really is escalated when you use it when you're using 240p now through RGB on this TV. It's not noticeable really in 480i, but on 240p you can really see that convergence occasionally, especially on a black screen when you've got one single white color that uses all three of your colors. Lastly, let's go through my final thoughts on this mod. I really enjoyed doing this mod, and this television uh, was otherwise nearly useless without it. It didn't have anything better than this video, so I felt like it was a good TV to mod. However, the complete drawbacks for geometry really kind of drive me crazy as well as the convergence. Since I'm working on PVMs a lot, it's really hard to deal with the lower quality in screen and uh, the convergence issues that aren't adjustable. It really makes it a difficult uh, to get past that. Now if I had no idea about that and I just saw this, this would blow me away. It's equally on par with any type of arcade monitor I've ever seen. And it looks phenomenal with the larger screen surface area. And anything you want to do that's maybe multiplayer would look great on this TV. And summarizing, I think it's a great thing to do. It doesn't cost a lot of money to do it if you can. Um, it is a highly skilled job and very difficult, but it's not the most difficult mod to do. But it will be challenging. And um, if you mess something up, you're stuck with a pile of trash that's very hard to get rid of because CRTs that are broken, you have to pay to get rid of them nowadays. So just a couple more things to note. First, your results could vary depending on the television. I mean, if you have a television that has a lot of different settings that are available and can uh, adjust geometry quite easily through their submenu or through potentiometers inside the TV, then this would be even a better mod. It just happens so that this TV doesn't have a lot of those features because it's a very early-ish, uh, you know, mid-90s CRT. And it's quite large, which also creates some more problems. But again, I've seen some good, very large TVs that were from the late 90s and early 2000s that had very good geometry and would probably make great candidates for an RGB uh, modification. Thanks again for watching Retro Tech. I'm Steve. Have a great day.